Hi, I'm Carl from OSP, and this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about avoiding repetition in your writing with the editing code REPET about our podcast. If you want to be a more effective writer, a more transparent editor, develop clearer strategic thinking, or learn from our network of expert friends and colleagues, that's what we're here for. We divide our episodes across three themes, communicate, connect, and grow. This is a communicate episode, and we're talking about avoiding repetition in your writing with our editorial code REPET. The REPET editing code falls into the style and phrasing part of the editing process. It's about being mindful of your phrasing so that you're not repeating yourself unnecessarily. In our documentation about this code, it says, avoid repetition in your writing. Not all repetition is bad. It has a purpose. It can be a powerful rhetorical tool. It can be persuasive. A little can go a long way. Use it sparingly. Hi, I'm Jam. I'm one of the partners at Open Strategy Partners, and I do a lot of writing and editing and thinking about authentic communication. The editing code REPET comes from repetition. At the time when we were creating the first batch of these, I thought it would be awesome to have three-letter names for the codes. And then I thought of one that needed to be four. And then I thought of one that needed to be five. And we've tried to stop at five. Anyone who remembers Windows 3 and earlier... Uh, Yeah, eight character file names used to be a thing. That's not what we're about. Repet comes from repetition. And the idea is to avoid careless repetition. And that can come at different scopes in the process. Anywhere from repeating entire ideas or things that are too similar to each other to be differentiated right down to the choice of specific words and pretty much everything in between. And the idea is to be mindful of what you're writing. My name is Liz. And I'm a communications consultant at OSP. So I help write and edit a lot of content for our clients from blog posts to case studies to landing pages. So the code REPET, it's about looking for repetitive clauses or sentences in piece of writing and trying to reduce the amount of repetition that you have in a piece. G'day, I'm Felicity Brandt. I am a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners and I work asynchronously with the rest of my team. I'm based in Australia and I am asleep while everyone else is awake. The editing code repet is about avoiding careless repetition. I think that this is an easy trap to fall into. I'm Christine Bueller. I'm a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners. In my day-to-day, I'm talking with clients and I'm helping them figure out what they want in terms of their communications. The REPIT editing code is just making sure that you are not repeating yourself in your writing. I seem to notice instances of this when one of us, myself included, put the same conclusion at the end of a couple of sections of an article. Now, if we think that conclusion is important, I see how it happens. But if the reader reads that, you know, blah, 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 and then red equals blue, and then something else, and then red equals blue, it feels a little weak sometimes. So when that happens, I will tend to see if those two sections might be able to be combined, or if actually those two ideas are important enough that they need to go to different conclusions or avoid that repetition. When I notice repetition in a text, I spot an opportunity often to tighten things up. Avoiding mindless repetition is the important part. When I write an article, I want the introduction to tell the reader what's coming in and what they can learn from it. And then I'm going to tell that story. And then in the conclusion, I'll probably repeat another version of that. And that's fine. But we're talking about being mindful and avoiding careless or unintentional repetition. 
I use the repet code usually when I'm reading through a draft and I notice that someone's made the same point twice, maybe in, in two different phrases, which is something that happens fairly often in first drafts, just while you're getting your thoughts out on the page. And usually two sentences can become one in that case. With repet, if I think something is a repetition, a careless repetition, I will mark that as an editor. Editing is a conversation, so that goes back to the writer and they can review what I've highlighted and reflect and they can fix what was a repetition or they can see that maybe they were trying to make two different points and they can tease it out. As an editor, when I'm using the repet code, it's really just about making sure that uh, the writer is not using words or phrases over and over again. When I'm writing, I kind of have a feeling for what I'm doing, and I tend to notice using the same word too many times too close together. There are some modern tools, helper tools that'll point out that you've used the word diverse or deployment or whatever it is a lot of times in your article, and that can be really, really helpful. But in the writing phase, I don't use anything like that. So I like to make my writing a little bit more colorful by finding synonyms and by not repeating the same word over and over, unless it's a term of art that I need to say, or unless there's some rhythmic or maybe some device that I'm going for, you know, in a list of items that are tied together by one concept, I might do it. That's not careless, then that's, or, or, or you know, I'm being mindful and intentional about it. As a writer, I think about repet usually at the phase where I'm self-editing or reading through a piece of content. Sometimes you do need to repeat yourself, like you, you might be saying a similar thing in your intro paragraph and your closing paragraph, but you should always be looking for variance in how you say it and not just different wording, but like how maybe you're making an argument you're going to prove at the beginning and then in the end you're maybe opening it up or leading to another question. The code repet, avoiding careless repetition, is really easily done. We all do it. Don't be hard on yourself. Sometimes you might be trying to make a point and you might use two or three sentences to get to that point. As an editor, it's sometimes quite easy for me to see that and I can cut words to, to make things more concise and, and kind of bring strings up together to um, make a much neater package that is more crisp, which is another of our editing codes. As a writer, you can pretty much always think of a new and different way to say something. But again, we talked about before, Sometimes as a writer, you're too close to the piece where you might not even realize that you are repeating a word or a phrase. And so that's where the editor comes in. As a writer, when I'm drafting or creating a piece, sort of keeping repet in the back of my mind, I think it helps because it encourages you to be a little more creative with your phrasing. If you're avoiding repetition, you have to think of alternative ways to say something, which is good in general because it keeps the writing more interesting, more clear, more engaging. In my view of professional communication in our context, which we usually call product communication, I feel that it is respectful to our readers to tell them something once and I hope that they get it. Why should I tell them twice or three times when I can tell them once? They can read the same paragraph again. I think it's respectful to limit the repetition. Honestly, if I can get something across in five or 600 words, why do I need to tell you in 1,200 words instead? So it's about respecting people's time and intelligence along the way too. Readers get really bored if they read a lot of repetitive writing. I think that's a pretty natural instinct. So that's why we as editors try to get rid of repetition as much as possible. People don't like feeling like they're having something drilled into them. The thing about repetition, for a reader, it's boring, yes. No one likes to read something repetitive. And this speaks to clarity if we're looking at why the repet code is important for a reader is um, at the basic level, yes, um, it's boring. But I think it also speaks to 
trust. So if you've got a lot of filler words or if you're saying the same thing in slightly different ways, you're going to lose trust because it may look like a whole piece of writing on a particular subject. But if there's no substance, then the reader can see that straight away. For readers, I think the repit code matters just for keeping the reading experience interesting, acknowledging that uh, the reader has made a choice to come here and read this thing that you have written out of all of the millions of things on the internet. Just making sure that you are acknowledging their time, their cognitive load, and that you're not increasing it by being careless or repetitive with your writing. We may have repeated ourselves a bit here, but I hope you now have a clearer understanding on how to effectively use repet and not fall into those careless repetition traps. How do you address repetition in your writing? Share your examples or questions with us via Twitter at open underscore strategy or email hello at openstrategypartners.com. This was one of the editorial codes we use at OSP. We'll be sharing more of them as we go. If you'd like to learn more in the meantime, come over to openstrategypartners.com. Have a look at our writer enablement workshops, case study offering, or get in touch to talk about your strategy or product communication needs. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this podcast. All the P's at OSP. Thanks to our clients who believe in us. Shout out to Patrick Gaumont for our high energy maple syrup flavored theme music. And to Mike Snow for additional horn arrangements. Thank you for listening and subscribing. About our three themes on the podcast. You'll hear from different members of the OSP team hosting episodes over time. Communicate. All things communication. We share how we tackle writing, editing, word choices, formats, processes, and more. Connect. In-depth conversations with interesting, smart people about who they are, what they do, and how they approach their life and work as communicators, technologists, and leaders. Grow. We cover strategic approaches to understanding and expressing the value of what you do, including tools, templates, and practical applications. We also feel strongly about building a mindful, positive, human-first culture at work. That's bound to pop up from time to time, too. This podcast is us figuring out communication, connection, and growing together. Subscribe now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or the podcast channel of your choice. Follow us, suggest guests and topics, ask us questions on social media. We are at open underscore strategy on Twitter. Until next time, thanks for listening to Communicate, Connect, Grow the OSP podcast. <laughs>